What's up, it's your boy Kyle Russ again here with HydroMind. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the three alarms of breath holding, how those affect you when you're in the water, and how those can be pushed farther so that you can hold your breath longer and surf longer, catch more waves, catch bigger waves, and all that stuff. So when you're holding your breath, you, you have three different alarms, that your signals that your body sends you to tell you to breathe. First is the physical. So this line here represents a timeline, so your maximum breath hold time. This is zero seconds, this is whatever. So the first alarm that comes up along with your breath hold is the physical. These are the physical signals that tell you you need to breathe. And they're things like tightness in the chest, diaphragmatic contractions, lightheadedness, and all those things. And those eventually will trigger mental alarms. So mental alarms is that awareness, that thinking, thinking in your head, like actual thoughts that, okay, I need to breathe. And, and then quickly following those are emotional alarms. And that is the worst part. So that that's fear. So, or in panic. So when you get those physical mental alarms and they start sending signals to your body and you feel like, oh man, I gotta breathe. You start getting those, that fear leads to panic and that leads to serious situations. So how to hold your breath longer and be safer in the water is to push these alarms farther down the line. Now, the ways to do that is to start with the physical. So actual, so change the amount of time it takes before that physical alarm comes. So if you add that up to here, it's gonna push everything down. So you'll be able to hold your breath longer before that you reach that panic and that fear state. Now that's super critical. There's lots of different things you can do to do that. And that's um, the number one place to start and you have to have that. But there's another super critical thing you can do to increase your breath hold time. And that's to put a wider gap between all these alarms. So if you wanna push, you push your physical up to here, you can actually spread to when the mental alarms come and when the emotional alarms come. In order to do that, that is what comes with familiar, familiarity. So you want to get used to these physical sensations. So when they come, you're expecting them, you're familiar with them, and that's okay. And then so you won't get as intense ideas in your head, like, okay, I need to breathe now, and you won't get as quick emotional alarms as all that fear stuff. So understanding how it feels to hold your breath and all these alarms, being aware of them, ready for them, and familiar with them is gonna put, put that gap between them all, and that's gonna extend your total breath hold time by a lot, and it'll keep you a lot safer in the water, you'll be able to surf longer, surf bigger waves, and all that kind of thing. Now there's another principle with familiarity, there's a rule that comes from the free diving world, it's called the rule of thirds. Now if you make a bar graph, like this, so this one, two, three thirds, and right here between the second and um, third third um, is kind of where you get your diaphragmatic contraction. So when you hold your breath, and when you reach this point, you start going like that because your diaphragm, the lizard part of your brain is telling you you need oxygen, so it's starting to force you to breathe, right? So if you aren't familiar with that, if that happens to you when you're underwater and for the very first time, it'll lead to panic really quickly. It'll set those emotional alarms instantly. So one thing to understand is how far you can go. So practice holding your breath as long as you can and how long does it take until you get to that point? Because that point is generally at the end of the second third. So let's say you can hold your breath for three minutes. And so you get your contractions at two minutes. You know that you still have th one more minute to hold your breath when those contractions happen so you won't panic. So that's gonna, ex that's gonna extend the gap between the mental and emotional alarms. So you'll be able to stay, so if you can stay calm under those physical and mental stressors, you won't tr trigger those emotional stressors so you'll be safer in the water and it'll extend your total breath hold time by a, by a significant amount. So just focusing on the physical is um, s such an incomplete practice as far as a high level surfer goes. If you really, really, really want to reach your potential and catch bigger waves, catch more waves and be safer in the water, you can't just focus on the physical, you have to focus on the familiarity, so that's gonna extend, like I said, the mental and the emotional. It's a super important part of breath holding, super, par um, super important part of confidence, and all those different things. So it's having a strong body, having a strong mind, being in control of your emotions is super, super important, and this comes with repetition. So I recommend you practice holding your breath every single day so you become super familiar, so that's gonna push the physical, but as well, you're gonna put those big gaps between the mental and emotional alarms, and that is, that is the trigger, that is what sets the, medium mediocre surfers from the advanced is, is that an understanding of your body a really good understanding of yourself your limits and how you can push them so that's all i got for this video the three alarms of breath holding apply this to your life do it every day and you're gonna see massive benefits in your surfing and in your regular life as well again i'm kyle russ of hydro mind thanks for watching